Hello friends, good day. Welcome to our YouTube channel GKR Soft. In this video, we are going to discuss about how float values are stored in memory. As you all know that how the integer and decimal values are getting stored inside the memory. Because that is a very common concept. But when you think about how float values are stored in memory, definitely you will get confused. And this is one of the important interview question as well. In the during the interview, if the interviewer asks, can you explain how the float values are stored in memory? Definitely you will get confused. So that is the reason we are planning this video. Now we will discuss about how we exactly float values are handled inside the memory and how what are the steps we need to take care. First, we have to understand about it. What is float? Float is a data type which is used to store the floating point number. This is you all know that. And if you want to understand more detail about the data type, you can watch my data type video. I have mentioned all the videos in the description. And float in C has a memory size of 4 bytes. But this is varies depends on the compiler to compiler. So in my compiler, it has 4 bytes. You can consider in such a way. And it's 32 bits because 1 byte is equal to 8 bits. And it has 6 decimal digits of precision. What is the meaning of 6 decimal digits? For an example, if you want to store the number of 1 dot 2 3 4 5 6 then after the dot it can allow only a 6 decimal digits of precision and floating point numbers stored by encoding significant and the exponent along with the sign bit so how these points we will discuss more deeply in this video so what is the syntax of to declare a float variable so the float data type you must mention then you can mention the variable name then you can assign the value so this is the syntax for creating a float variable so how to find the size of float so this is a simple example program which i have typed in my pc so i have created the float data type the variable name called f i have assigned the value called 1.6 and i am just doing the size of and this is you no need to do like that you can directly create a float f and you can check the size of float that is also gives the same answer so for me in my system it's actually about the 32 bits so it's equal to 4 bytes Okay, how the floating point num number memory layout looks like. For an example, in a typical single precision 32 bit floating point memory layout has the following fields. For an example, one is sign. This field is actually called as a sign. Then it has the exponent. So the exponent has width of 8 bit. Then we have a significant width of 23 bit. So 23 plus 8 plus 1. This one is a sign bit. Okay, what is sign bit? The high order bit indicates a sign. So this is a high order bit and 0 indicates a positive value and 1 indicates negative. For an example, sign bit will decide whether you are going to store the positive number or the negative floating point number. Exponent. The next 8 bits are used for the exponent which can be positive or negative. But instead of reserving another sign bit, they are encoded such that for an example, if it is 0, then it will start with 1. So, if you are representing um, a negative number, then everything will be 0, 0, 0. Meaning, especially in the case of sign bit, it's 0. And significant, the remaining 23 bits used for significant alias mantisa. So, you can consider here as significant. First step. So, for storing the floating point number into the memory, we can consider as a multiple steps. So, the first step is, you can take an example. Here, I have taken an example of 10.75. But you, you, whenever you want to try with, you can take a normal example of 3.14. It's a pi value, right? That's also you can try with. But here I have taken an example of 10.05. So 10 is an integral part and 0.75 is a fractional part. So when you want to represent 10, so 10 is a decimal number. So when you want to represent in a binary, it will come with 1010. It is based on 8421 format. If you want to understand how to convert the decimal into binary, then you can watch my complete C playlist. I have taken a separate video also for how to convert decimal number into binary. But 10 will be represented as 10108421 code. So in the eighth location, I have set as 1. And in the second, that here I am setting as 1. So 8 plus 2, 10. To convert the fractional part to binary, multiply the fractional part with 2 and take the 1 bit which appears before the decimal point. For an example, here the fractional part is 0 0.75. So I am multiplying with 2, 0 0.75 into 2. So this will become as a 1.50. We have to take 1, 
and move 0 0.502 next step. 0 0.50 into 2 again. 1.0.0. Take 1 and stop the process. Because when you have a 0, 0 remainder, there is no remainder, then you are would have to stop the process. But for an example, when you are multiplying with 0 0.23 or in the 3.14 case, when you are going to multiply with 1, uh, uh, 1.4 into 2, then this will take like 0 0.28 and 0 0.28 will be multiplied with 2, then 0 0.56, then it will be multiplied with 2, 1.12. So you can go for some uh, steps, then finally you can stop it. But in this case, 0 0.75, so finally, when you are multiplying with 0 0.50 into 2, this will become 1.00, then take 1, then you can stop the process. So, the fractional part will become 1, 1. So, now you can think about it. The integral part is 1, 0, 1, 0 and your fractional part is becoming 1, 1. So, finally, you have to represent as like 1, 0, 1, 0 dot 1, 1. So, this is the binary representation for 10, 1, 0, 7, 5. Now, now, this is the step 1. Now we have to go to the another step for converting binary number into the normalized form. So for converting the floating point numbers, we always normalize it like 1 dot significant bit in 2 power exponent. So 1 dot is common and we have to decide about the significant bit. But now finally we have 1010 dot 11. So this will become normalized as 1 dot as per the standard then we have to represent 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. So, we are, you can consider in a way, we shifted 3 bits to left side. So, that will become an exponent according to the standard. So, into 2 power 3. So, this is the normalized form, the pictorial representation. You can see it here. Here, exponent is 3 and significant is 1 dot 0, 1, 0, double 1. So, this is the way you have to do it. For an example, if you have, 1, 0, 1, 0 and only you have a 3 bits or 4. According to that, you have to take a exponent value. So, here since I have done a left shift of 3 bits, so the exponent value becoming a 3. This is the second step. Fine, next step is. In floating point number, no concept called 2's complement to store negative numbers. So, to avoid and to overcome that, now they come up with the bias concept where we add some positive value to negative exponent and make it positive. So, in general, whether it negative or positive, they add bias value to exponent value to reduce implementation complexity. So, for finding the bias value, this is a formula 2 power n minus 1 minus 1. So, here we have allocated 8 bits for exponent, right? Because here we have discussed about 8 bits we have planned for an exponent. So, the same way here, 8 bits is the n value. So, finally, 2 power 8 minus 1, minus 1. So, 2 power 7 minus 1 equal to 127. So, this is the bias value. In the normalized component will be actual component plus bias value which is 130. Because 3, already you know that where we have taken 3 plus 127. In that case, when you are going to take 2 or when you are going to take 4 bits, then according to that, you have to decide. So, in that case, a binary form of 130 is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Again, 130 is a decimal number. If you want to convert to binary, so then you have to perform the decimal to binary conversion. If you want to really understand the decimal to binary conversion, please watch my decimal to binary conversion video. Now we are in the final step of how the value will be represented in the memory. So sign bit is 0 because 10.75 is the positive number. So that's what we have discussed in the representation of floating point value. So if it is a positive, then sign bit will be 0. So here I have taken example for 10.75. So sign bit is 0. Exponent value 130. Right? This is a binary conversion of 130. Significant value is 1.01011. This is what we have calculated in the significant side. So now you have an exponent value, you have a sign bit, you have a significant value as well. So here, one of the another important step is we have to eliminate 1 before the dot because whatever be the number, we are always going to normalize as 1 dot something. So in that case, we no need to represent 1 dot. So we can eliminate. So no need to store the 1 because standard is always saying to normalize this 1 dot something. So that is the reason 
this number we no need to store it just take bits after the dot so finally we will become 0 1 0 double 1 so you know that how we have calculated the significant value how we calculate the exponent value how we decided the sign bit now this is a pictorial representation since it is a positive value here it is indicates msb indicates 0 then you will come to know about it it is a positive number then we are storing a exponent value you know about exponent because of 130 the for the exponent you can keep in your mind you have to add the bias value as well for bias value you know the formula how to calculate so for the bias value the formula is 2 power n minus 1 this n will be decided however the bit you are allocating for the exponent okay so in the pictorial representation this is exponent and in the 23 bit we have a significant value so in the 23 bit you know about the significant value this one dot here we will not store the one and rest of the values we have to represent as a significant the same case if you want to store minus 10.05 then here in the msp indicates one for representing the negative number this is the difference between positive and negative floating point representation inside the memory so hope you got an idea now how exactly these things will work now we have to think or we have to think in a way how we can write a C program because when we are learning a C language we always have to write a C program for all the concepts here I have tried something and I finally bring this output how we can represent here I have taken a float value as 10.05 and here I am just printing the float value and I am copying to the answer integer 8 value and I am doing the integer to binary conversion to represent how the 10.05 will be stored inside the memory so here i have a for loop will i will will i will start to run from 0 to 31 because totally we have a 4 bytes so total, totally 32 by bits so 0 to 31 we will execute so we are starting from 31 here i have a data the data is actually whichever we have stored the float value inside the unsend integer that will come here and we have to do the right shift then we are doing k for an example the k value is after doing the right shift and we are doing with one with the under operation so if it is matches then we will print to one for an example if k is one then we will print to one because when you are doing under operation doing with one then finally we will get the one because one and one equal to one so if k is becoming a zero then we will print will zero so this is a final output this is a value you can match with your pictorial representation how we have stored inside the memory so this is a simple c program for how we can represent pictorial representation that means floating point representation in binary value and how the binary value will get stored inside the memory hope you got the idea how the float value will get stored inside the memory because this is one of the important interview question so thanks for watching this video if you like it please share it with your friends if you want to stay with us for more technical content and want to understand more about more c language concept then please subscribe our channel. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.